Association. Um, you all know what Hanukkah celebrates, right? In uh, 165 BC, <coughs> I used to think that it came from the word Hana, which is Hannah in English, and Anna too, which means light, because there's a feast of lights. But like with many other words, there's confusion about it. Supposedly it means dedication, it refers to the rededication of uh, the temple in Jerusalem in, in the year 165 B.C. by Judah and Maccabee. You, you've heard of them, the Maccabees soccer team. And it had been profaned by the Greeks. The beer, Maccabee beer. Uh, right. The Greeks came in. Uh, it's an area that gets trampled uh, periodically by a lot of different peoples. And uh, I used to, th you know, you sort of think that uh, Palestine and... Uh, Israel, whatever you want to call it, is, a, is or at least was a homogeneous place, but that's not true at all. Um, there are always many nationalities living there, not only the Jews. Um, after the, uh, after the uh, Empire of Alexander broke up, uh, the Seleucid Greeks took over uh, Palestine. And uh, they, Hellenized, they wanted to Hellenize it, make it into a kind of Greek place. They were also called, they were called Seleucids, Spartans, Hellenes, Lacedaemonians, and Greeks. And the inhabitants, the inhabitants were called different names too in this period. They were called Arabs, Nabataeans, Philistines, Idumeans, and other nationalities. Now, how did the Greeks want to change the Jews? Hellenize them. I'm going to tell you. First, how was that? First, they wanted to get rid of circumcision. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Which you know the Jews. The Jews. Well, you could actually, oh. in a way, but that's it for another program. Because the original circumcision was only. It's funny you should ask. Another. Was only a clip off the end. You know, just the part, little part that hangs. A little off the top, you mean? Yeah, the yeah. The, the foreskin that uh, that uh, hangs over. It's and do, actually, during this very period, uh, uh, Jewish boys became a enamored of the Greek culture, which was a world culture, or uh, I think a superior culture in terms of what we think today. So uh, the Jews start to imitate the Greeks. They took... Uh, Greek names, like American Jews take American names. You know, Irving is not a Jewish name. It's a Greek name? No, it, it was English, but by now, no, no self-respecting guy will name his kid Irving. But anyway, uh, oh, you think you. so one of the things that, one of the things uh, the Greeks set up were these health clubs. They called them gymnasiums. And uh, Olympics, they had Olympics. And the Jews wanted to take part in that. And... Uh, when they did take part in it, uh, and the Greek, the rest of the population looked at them, their peenies looked funny. So they laughed at them, ha, 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 ha. And you so... You they're weenies, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the kosher weenie. That must have been very humiliating. It was humiliating. So they went, to, they went to Alexandria, which was a great Jewish city, had a million people at this period. And uh, some doctor devised a little uh, uh, treatment called fulguration, and it really fogged them up. <laughs> you pour you poured the uh, an acid on the on the part of your foreskin that was still there, and then it blossomed out and it looked supposedly normal. So the rabbis got sore at that, and it's only from that period yeah, that they that, <laughs> that they made the complete cut, the complete cut. It's a very funny story. All right, so. Now what is well, the, the hence, now hence wait a while, how much time do we have? So what is the spiritual aspect, this was, uh, you know, we're always told in yeah, the Jewish so what religion. what is the spiritual aspect? Of circumcision. Well, it's a sacrifice. Identify. You give this up for God, you know, and you give up your animality, you know, it keeps your cock in place, you know, you don't, you aren't a wild sexual being. So, I have two... That, that, uh, two didn't they figure out after a few years that didn't really work? Well, they still haven't figured it out. Well, All right, but you know, I, I think, I think, no, I think that if that if cutting off the end is really spiritual, think of how good it would be if you. Can we get a close up? 
You see what the guy's offering? The whole thing. Is that enough? That would be even more more spiritual, don't you think? I think the whole bottom part with the legs yeah. would be good too. Yeah, well, they do that in certain places. Yeah, well, if you got the balls enough to do it. And that, <laughs> and as for you feminist orthodox women, um, I think you should demand equal an equal cut of the pie and and really come all out for uh, clitoral circumcision, clitoral circumcision. Which is done, or or maybe extirpation if that isn't it. Yeah, I know, but they're not Jewish. But maybe they are, maybe they are. <laughs> then there's always infibulation, sewing up the vagina, or if, if you don't go for this whole thing of just cutting off the tip, you could do <laughs> sub-incision, you know, they do that. You cut the whole bottom, the urethra, so you can uh, urinate like a woman. It's really uh, cunis envy. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Okay, so that, the other thing they did, the other thing they did that defiled the temple was to sacrifice pigs. And the altar, instead of sacrificing uh, other animals, those boars. So uh, how come they couldn't think they they couldn't think of being vegetarians? Then the health clubs we mentioned, they used to rip up Torahs. Oh yeah, now here, here's my comment on the pigs here. See the vegetarian comment. I I'll have an order of ham and eggs. What do you have, Herb? I don't know yet, but it ain't going to be pig's ass and avian ova. Oh, and you weren't allowed to have any idols except uh, Jewish generals. No, no. It, basically, they wanted to substitute Zeus, their local god, for Jehovah, the Jews' local god. And uh, this is just another... Uh, not, not, that the, not that the Greeks were so wonderful. See, uh, here's an example of what the Greeks brought. Great moments in the history of sport. The Spartans invent football. You can see what they're playing with. I thought the Texans invented football. No, no, that's, that's a lie. Okay, so so much for that. Now, uh, so, uh, so the, uh, Hanukkah celebrates a military victory anyway, and we're trying to get away from that. There, there is, however, there are heroes in Israel. Oh, yeah, and, some, uh, and one of them, no, I can't eat now. Right. One of them is um, we'll pass out to the uh, Mordechai Venunu. You know, I heard uh, Ambassador Netanyahu of Israel on the. Uh, I hear he is really is a Yahoo, though. Uh, on the uh, on the on the TV, he was on with Larry King, and uh, Larry King being. Not a totally incompetent journalist asked him uh, if Israel, you know, we're discussing the Middle East. Uh, if Israel has, uh, you know, he was no, complaining about he, he was complaining about uh, Iraq's uh, chemical weapons. Not that Iraq is so lovely, you know, but and he was asked uh, by. Uh, Larry King, whether Israel didn't Israel have about 150 atomic weapons, and he said no. And he said he said two things. First, he said Israel will not be the first to use atomic weapons in the uh, Middle East. And then, he, but then he was asked specifically, but does Israel have atomic weapons? And he said no. And I figured it out like back. I remember during the Vietnam War, Cabot Lodge, who was ambassador to Vietnam, was asked. Uh, was he going to resign the ambassadorship? He said no. Next week, his, his uh, resignation was announced, and the reporter said, but you told us you weren't going to resign. And he said, his answer was, well, when you asked me that, I had already resigned. So this is how I figure uh, Ambassador Netanyahu figured it out. The Israelis have 150 uh, bombs set to go, but uh, they haven't set the warhead. So technically, which would take maybe five or 10 minutes, so technically, these are not weapons. All right, now, uh, one of the ways it was proven, the best way, I think, that it was proven that uh, Israel had uh, 100 to 200 atomic weapons was when Mordechai Venunu, an Israeli nuclear technician, who after many years working at the government's secret bomb factory in Dimona, that's the southern desert, he took a course in uh, philosophy, ethics at, at Be'er Shiva 
university. He quit his job, and then he'd taken some photographs before he quit. An interview to the London uh, Observer, he exposed to the whole world the fact that Israel now had over 100 weapons ready to go. He was in London at the time, and he was seduced. This is a, a, an incredibly uh, dramatic and uh, sentimental story. He was seduced uh, from London to Rome by a blonde Jewish-American Mossad agent who just happened to bump into him. Uh, he was drugged th there in Rome, uh, in her sister's apartment. He was dragged aboard an Israeli freighter, kidnapped back to the Promised Land. And in a completely secret trial, he was sentenced to 18 years, an 8 by 4 24-hour-a-day lighted isolation cell in Ashkelon Prison, where he now uh, remains. So this is a song about, you can keep your Maccabees, you know, for the race. Oh, by the way, uh, when the Jews finally got their independence in this struggle, uh, over the next hundred years, they pr proceeded to uh, uh, forcibly Judaize many tribes in the south of Israel, in the west of Israel, and the east of Israel. Well, I get, you know, turn about is fair play. Um, that is, they made them in, into Jews, made them adopt the Jewish religion. And I don't qu I know quite how they did it, but I doubt if it was uh, all done in a very uh, uh, literary manner. They were wars with those tribes. Um, the Venunu Defense Committee is at number four Plimpton Avenue, P O I M P T O N Avenue, London, N W 6, out in England. I'll give that again at the end of the song. We're going to do three songs here. We're going to celebrate Christmas and Hanukkah. And uh, let's see, I have to explain some. This is the Ballad of Mordechai Venunu. And uh, Demona was the town where this, they called it a textile factory. Just the cedars are what the temple was, the wood in the temple. You all know what the temple is. Halevi's Eagle. Mossad is the, the, uh, the organization that taught the CIA how to work. Um, Halevi's Eagle, uh, Yehuda Halevi was a Spanish, early Spanish Zionist, a great, uh, a fine poet. And the Eagle is what he imagined, uh, he would fly back from Spain uh, on in the 12th century. He never got there. He died on the way. Adolf Eichmann, you all know him. He's the, uh, the German, German uh, George Bush. No, no, no. Who would be an American comparable to him? Who ran the about? Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Americans aren't as orderly as the Germans. That's true. Rachmanis means pity. Okay. He, he worked ten years, Demona's desert, to bring the desert to the land, to make the cedars burn to ashes, to let the temple sink to sand. He thought about stones in the Bible. He told about bombs in the rock. Mossad caged him in Halevi's eagle. And then they threw away the lock. He dreamed about Adolf Eichmann, he who obeyed like the rest who saves one life oh Jew or Arab who saves one soul dwells with the blessed they called him mad they called him penal they called him traitor apostate but all he did was call Rahman us all he did defy the state. We need more Jews like Maud Vanunu. We need more Arabs search their heart. Oh, people, will you be mere down slaves? 
Oh, work is well, you'll be up starts. We need more brothers like Chai Benunu. We need more sisters to search their heart. Oh, work is well. Okay, the address once more. The Venuna Defense Committee is at number four Plimpton Avenue, P O Y M P T O N, number four, London, England, N W six. Write them for more information. Um, this next is a sing along. Stephen's going to do the honors. We're going to honor Christmas, too. Uh, yeah, no, here. Uh, You could hold, hold this up. And, uh, and you at home can sing along. Who's going to talk about it? Hanukkah is actually a, a celebration of uh, Jewish war victory, and uh, yeah. Which war was that, Daddy? <laughs> it was uh, the war against the, one of the wars against the Greeks, and uh, they were running short of supplies. And by God's miracle, the Greeks were saved. No, the Jews were saved because the oil lasted long. But they didn't have. They would have been better off if they had some of these. Uh, M24s, right? Anyway. On the first day of Hanukkah, my allies gave to me a cartridge in an armory. On the second day of Hanukkah, my allies gave to me two recoilless rifles and a cartridge in an armory. On the third day of Hanukkah, you know, Hanukkah is actually a, a celebration of uh, Jewish war victory. And, uh, yeah. Which war was that, Daddy? <laughs> it was uh, the war against, the, one of the wars against the Greeks, and uh, they were running short of supplies, and by God's miracle, the Greeks were saved. No, the Jews were saved, because the oil lasted long, but they didn't have, they would have been better off if they had some of these... Uh, M24s, right? Anyway, on the third day of Hanukkah, my allies gave to me three bayonets beaming, two recoilless rifles, and a cartridge in an armory. On the fourth day of Hanukkah, my allies gave to me four whirly birds, three bayonets beaming, two recoilless rifles, and a cartridge in an armory. On the fifth day of Hanukkah, my allies gave to me Five golden gunboats, four whirly birds, three bayonets beaming, two recallless rifles, and a cartridge in an armory. Which should be a box of cartridges, shouldn't it? Some cartridges in it. Well, oh, some, yeah. on the sixth day of Hanukkah, my allies gave to me six pipers piping, five golden gunboats, four whirly birds, three bayonets beaming, two recallless rifles, and a cartridge in an armory. On the seventh day... Hanukkah, my allies, the U.S. gave to me seven snipers sniping, six pipers piping, five golden gunboats, four water birds whirling, three bayonets beaming, two recoilless rifles, and a cartridge in an armory. This is, there's only eight days, there's only eight days in Hanukkah. On the, see, it's not just the uh, U.S., you'll see. On the eighth day of Hanukkah, my allies gave to me Eight French Mirages, seven snipers sniping, six pipers piping, five golden gunboats, four whirly birds, three bayonets beaming, two recoilless rifles, 
and a cartridge in an armory. But what we really could use would be some of them smart bombs. Smart bombs? Maybe yeah. a patriot or two? Yeah. And if you don't, if you think this is prejudice, you could recite it for the rejectionist, with the rejectionist front version. You just substitute Ramadan for Hanukkah. You could even make it Greek Orthodox. You could, uh, you could substitute the Red, uh, the Red Fleet. You know, the Ukrainians and the uh, Russians were each arguing over who owned the uh, oh, Soviet yeah. Navy that's Russia. in the Black yeah, yeah. Sea. I got a solution, you know. They're arguing for years already by now. I think they should cut the boats in half. Yeah. And give. Now, there's a biblical... Okay. Backwards Jewish soldiers strolling back from war Hug your Gentile brothers as you've done before Presidents and premiers perish Empires rise and fall But hearts of all compassion still might save us all. Yeshu and Kohelet blend wisdom and fresh love. Kiss the hand that helps you, blue sky still above. Backward Jewish soldiers marching from all wars. Embrace your Gentile sisters as you've done before. Kings and presidents perish, all empires fade and fall. But hearts of sweet compassion still may save us all. Yeshu and Kohelet blend wisdom and fresh love. Kiss the hand that helps you, blue sky still above. Backward Jewish soldiers strolling back from war. Hug your Gentile brother. As you've done before, presidents and premiers perish, empires rise and fall, but hearts of old compassion still might save us all. Yeshu and Kohelet blend wisdom and fresh love. Kiss the hand that helps you, blue sky still above. Backward Jewish soldiers marching from all wars. Embrace your Gentile sisters as you've done before. Kings and presidents perish, all empires fade and fall. But hearts of sweet compassion still may save us all. Kings and presidents perish, all empires fade and fall. But hearts of sweet compassion Still may save us all. Jim, now there's an interesting, the latest information on the Baal Shem that appeared in a, uh, a journal of Jewish scholarship recently was uh, very interesting, I think, and will be interesting to our uh, lookers. Viewers? Lookers, I call Looker. them. And, uh, because he lived in Padalia and uh, functioned in Volinia and Galicia, that part of the uh, Jewish Pale that was at that time under Turkish occupation. And he used to do strange things. For instance, he smoked a pipe. He would, have the sh he would shake when he prayed. 
and he would like disappear some Friday evenings and, uh, and riding a horse looking for something. And the theory is, it's not proven, that he was smoking opium at the time. Yeah. Which is okay, except it's a really dangerous drug. He should have just been smoking grass, I would think. All right, so anyway, that's one theory. So, uh, no, they had it, but... Um, so, so much for the Baal Shem. And here is, uh, at last, the moment you've been waiting for. I have to stand when I say Would you? Yeah, it's called, uh, where, where's my wandering Jew? Do I have to say? No. Good. You have to, there'll be questions. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my wandering Jew tonight? Or on the left, or on the right, does ecstasy come in the fall of the night? Oh, where is my wandering Jew tonight? Where is my wandering Jew? Did Hitler survive in the heart of the beast? Is happiness there where we seek at least? Does the Baal Shem dance at the president's feast? Oh, where is my wandering Jew? Is loneliness cast at the center of life? Is peace our reward at the end of this strife? Is our time's music the gun and the fife? Oh, where is my wandering Jew tonight? Where is my wandering Jew? Where is my wandering Jew tonight? Where are my children and where is my wife? Where is the song I once called my life? Oh, where is my wandering Jew tonight? Where is our wandering life tonight? Oh, where is our wandering life? Tonight, where is our wonderful life? Heavy mail. Heavy. Heavy. All right, Cereal comic. Fucking phone call. <laughs>